Panyagapani could not enter the Sava Hall during the Upasara to Nambi and Nambi. He was standing in the crowd outside the doorway looking in. We have already seen that Vandiyadeva's attention was elsewhere. Panyagapani was staring at Vandiyadeva's face. Another person was watching as if he did not see all this. He is our old friend Al Warkati. After telling Prince Madhurandhagar about the matter, he came out of Vandiyathevan's palace in confusion. The doctor's son, who was standing at a distance, approached him and asked, Father. Who are you? He asked. Vandiyathevan was startled to see Panyagapani. Without showing it off, what did you hear? I asked who you are, he said. Who am I? Are you asking? Which self are you asking? Are you asking this body of Panchabutams of earth, water, air, air, sky? Are you asking the Atma, the source of life? Are you asking the Supreme Soul, the basis of the soul? Father! What is this question? Neither you, nor I. All is Lord. Mayam. The world is an illusion, listen to elders like Tirunarayur Nambai to know the truth of cow, potty, and passion. After saying that, Vandiyathevan jumped on his horse standing at the gate of the palace. After galloping the horse for a while, the doctor's son, knowing that he was not following him, slowly left. But is the doctor's son so easily fooled? His suspicions were now confirmed. He went to the city police officer and reported the news. He also went around town taking two policemen sent by the officer. As he expected, he met Vandiyadeva at a crossroads. This is the one. Capture him. He shouted. What, Dad? Are you crazy? Said Valavarayan. Who is mad, you ask? This body, the life within it, the soul. The supreme soul. Or the cow, potty, passion. Said the doctor's son Panyagapani. You look crazy now that you are staring. I am not mad, the doctor who came with you to Kadakare. Guards. He is the one who escaped from Tanjavur Fort and fled to Sri Lanka. Capture him at once. The guards approached Valavarayan. Beware. Don't make the mistake of listening to what he has to say. I am the messenger of Prince Madhuranthak Deva. Vandiyathevan said. No no. He is a great liar. Imprison him immediately. Cried the doctor's son. By this time a large crowd had gathered around them. Some people in the crowd spoke about Vandiyathevan's party, some doctors spoke on behalf of the son. Looking at him, he doesn't look like a philanthropist, said one. Not at all said another. Can the causer be so petty? Why not? Shall one horse mount and go openly in the street? Why does Namit Taka wear a broken sword? Whose Atran is coming to the old room to see what the hell is going on? Meanwhile, Panyagapani shouted, Capture him! Capture him at once! The order of the Punisher! He shouted. Hearing the name Palyavatarayar, Many people gathered there felt sympathy for Vandiyadeva. They looked to see if there was any way to escape him. Meanwhile all were Kadayan came to the side of the crowd. Is the messenger here who came with the prince? He shouted. No, he is one, cried Pinyagapani. What's all the fuss? Come with me if you are the one who came with Madhuranthak Deva. The princess told you to fetch you. All were Kadian said. Vandiyathevan's heart leaped. I am the one for that purpose. Here I come, he said. Don't go home. Don't leave each other. Cried the doctor's son Panyagapani. All Workadian said, prove that you are a man of purpose. Only then can you come with me. He said and signaled with his eyes. How do you mean to prove it? Vandiyathevan asked urgently. There are two horses galloping aren't they? Those who come upon them seem to bring some urgent message. If that is true, tell me what message they bring. Vandiyathevan stared at the horseman and said, Oh, I tell you, a royal family member has met with an accident. 
That is the sad news they are bringing. Vandiyathevan said. By the time he had said this, the horses had approached the crowd. The horses stopped because the people did not allow them to go up. You look like messengers, what message do you bring? All Workadian asked. Yes, we are messengers. We bring sad news. Prince Aroma's Hivarmar's ship has been caught in a whirlwind. The prince jumped into the sea to save someone and drowned. And when one of those who came on horseback said this, the crowd cried out, Alas! Alas! The pitiful voices rose in heart-rending tones. I don't know where so many people came from. It is not possible to say how they arrived so soon. Men, women, old men, and children surrounded the messengers in great numbers. Many people asked them many questions, many cried and lamented. Many people in the city already know that the Palyavatarayas do not like Aromas Hivarmar. They had also heard that the Pavatarayas had sent men into Elam to bring the prince prisoner, so many in the crowd first began to grumble about the Pavatarayas. Then they started cursing loudly. The pirates must have deliberately drowned the prince in the sea. They kept talking to each other. The sound of the people talking, the sound of their lamentations, and the sound of cursing the reapers rose like the roar of the sea. The ambassadors of Tanjavur, who were caught in the middle of this crowd, were unable to go up to the palace. They tried to keep the people away but it didn't work. How? Where? For when? Sure. The people asked the messengers and forbade them from going up. Looking at the guards who had accompanied the physician's son, all Workadian said, Why are you standing idly by? Dismiss the crowd and take the ambassadors to the palace. He said. The guards were also disturbed on hearing the above news. They now came forward and tried to give way to the messengers. The messengers advanced little by little towards the palace. The crowd also kept going without letting them go. More and more people were coming. In such a large gathering of people, who were unitedly lamenting the fate of Prince Aromas Hivarmar, only one animal said, Oh! This is some ruse. A ruse to escape one. It was screaming. No one paid attention to the doctor's son who screamed like that. His cries fell on no one's ears. The large crowd pushed the doctor's son forward as if the flood of Manati was sweeping away a small drum that had fallen into it. Just as the crowd began to gather, Vandiyadeva dismounted from his horse. As the crowd began to move, all Workadian came near him and took his hand. Leave the horse. Then we can look for it. Come with me at once. He whispered. Father. You have come as a religious cure. Otherwise, I don't know what would have happened to me. Said Valavarayan. Is this your business? You need to be in trouble, someone needs to come and rescue you. All Workadian exclaimed. Both of them stood by the side of the road so as not to be pushed by the crowd. After the gathering, all Workadian took Vandiyadeva's hand and took him in another direction. They broke into the locked Cody house that we had seen earlier on the street where the palaces were. They entered the Nandavan in the backyard and walked along flagged paths. Did you see the blue stream for a while? A stream floated in it. There was a Madara sea in the stream. Vandiyadeva's heart jumped when he saw her.